Welcome to our Meet the Parents podcast, the show where we share stories from everyday life to help with the ups and downs of parenting. We'll have honest conversations as together we grow everyday faith in our homes. Be sure to follow us on your favourite podcast provider, where you can watch the video version on YouTube. All show notes and episodes can be found on livingrock.church forward slash meet the parents. Today we're going to be thinking about faith in our under five children and particularly looking at play and how that can play a role in helping our children explore faith together. So I'm delighted to welcome my guest today, which is Victoria. It's lovely to have you here. Um, Victoria, could you just tell us a bit about your family, who you are and uh, tell us more about yourself? Oh, okay. Thank you so much for having me. It's really nice to be here. Great. Um, my name is Victoria. I am 47 years old and I have two girls who are mm-hmm. nine and 12. One of them is going to be 10 in about two weeks' time. So I'm kind of trying to think of her as 10 because for me that felt like a big deal last time. We're parents of a 20-year-old now, which is quite a big deal. I have to keep telling myself. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) yeah. yeah. (laughs) And uh, you are a mum, you're a home educator and you run a website, don't you? I do, yeah. Called God Venture. Yes, I started that before I had the children. So I worked in children's work since I was about 14 um, in all sorts of different settings. And what I discovered was that most parents felt really ill-equipped to do anything to do with faith at home. So I produced a sticker book because I thought that would be a really easy, fun way to do faith at home. (laughs) Um, And it went from there, basically. So I've got a whole series of books, loads of resources and about 300 ideas on the website you can just get. I highly recommend a little browse. (laughs) You'll be in a little space for a while there. (laughs) It's great. (laughs) Highly recommend it. Um, Could you just share with us uh, your preferred parenting superpower? If you could have any superpower, what would you have? Because we like to ask all our visitors. So um, I'm always telling my children that I have eyes in the back of my head. I've told them that they grow as you're giving birth, that the eyes pop out (laughs) as you're giving birth. Yeah. And um, so I would like them to actually be real, to be able to say that. Um, Possibly on antennae so I can see around oh, corners yeah, yeah. and upstairs and things. So you know everything. Yes. The all-seeing eye. Yes. <laughs> Wonderful. And uh, do you have um, like a funny story you can share with us? Because we all like to <laughs> share our successes and our interesting stories here. <laughs> so, so way before I had children, I always loved playing with children, being yeah, with children, yeah. working with them. And so lots of my friends wanted me to be god mum to their children. Yeah, yeah. And so I have three god daughters and um, we visited one of them um, when their parents were missionaries in Thailand. Oh, cool. and and their parents quite sensibly took advantage of us being there and went out for a date and left yep. me babysitting. Wonderful. Um, and the, my youngest goddaughter was two at the time. And she was very, very cute, um, but quite naughty. And yes. her parents said to me, Shh, when you put her to bed, she will get up quite a lot of times. And I was like, OK. And I thought, well, we'll soon get that sorted. Yeah. So I really <laughs> no, laid it on thick. <laughs> yeah. Um, when I put you to bed, you need to stay in your bedroom. You know, this is bedtime. We've done yeah. all the fun stuff, which we had done. Loads of fun yeah, stuff. Yeah. So you need to stay in your room. Like, unless you're actually bleeding, stay in your bedroom. <laughs> yeah. um, it's all fine. And I uh, didn't hear a peep from her. And I was like... I am super nanny. Yeah, yeah. Um, except in the morning, my friends uh, went to like, you know, see their children yeah. and make sure they were still alive and things. And there was this horrendous smell in her bedroom <laughs> and she'd done a poo in her bin. Because <laughs> you'd left her in the room. <laughs> she wasn't she was allowed so out. to come out of the toilet. I love it. <laughs> so I was like totally scary, scary so, nanny. Did you ever get invited back? <laughs> <laughs> I did, fortunately. Oh, and right. I won't tell you which one of them it is just in no, case no. she's listening. Keep the confidence here. We don't want to let out any trade secrets here. <laughs> So one of the things we wanted to chat about today was about how we can explore faith uh, in our homes with little people, the the children who are very small and probably pre-talking and some of them might be just toddling about and we're like, where on earth do we start parenting for faith with our children? And do you have any suggestions on when is a good time to start? A good time to start is today. Yes. So I could tell you the best time to start is before your children are born. Yeah. But I'm presuming if you're watching this or listening to this, most <laughs> of you will already have children, so it's a bit late. Yeah. Um, if you are watching this and you're pregnant, start now. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but if you've, whatever age your children are, it's time, is a good time to start because yeah. you start everything else in terms of what you share with your life, with your children from the point that they're born. So yeah. you start, you know, you take them to your own home. You don't yeah. take them to some kind of weird plastic house where, you know, children get to live. You take them yeah. home and yeah. you share with them your choice of sofa and your choice of food and your choice of how often granny visits all of that stuff happens from the point your child is born Um, and so faith should just be part of that because faith should just be part of our normal life just to start as soon as you can brilliant Mm -hmm. I love it and uh, it reminds me of the story of um, John the Baptist in the Bible because I love how when Elizabeth was pregnant with him and Mary was pregnant with Jesus and they met and John the Baptist and Elizabeth jumped for joy when he met Mm. Jesus kind of (laughs) and I just think there's so much that can happen even in the womb, can't there? Yeah. Like before the child is born, there's a sense of the Holy Spirit and the power of God in them that 
let's not undermine what God already wants to begin in them. And I remember praying over my son before he was born and singing songs to him and, you know, and just creating an environment because I wanted everything that I'd got in my faith to pass on to him at a young age. And uh, what are ways we can minister to our unborn children? You know, have you got other suggestions mm. about that pregnancy stage where yeah. we're not actually even born yet, but we can still have an influence? I, I think praying for them is a really important one. I think using our, our imagination to imagine, try to imagine, because at that point it's really hard. Like yeah, you've yeah. now got a 20-year-old, <laughs> yeah. it's easy to imagine. <laughs> yeah. um, but when you've got somebody inside you, it's difficult yeah. to imagine. It's a real human being, yeah. isn't it? Um, but using our imagination to think... Um, you know, if, if this is really a person inside me, what might I want them to be like mm. when they're an adult? Yeah. And I think that's a good thing to think whenever, whatever age our children are, what would we like to see in terms of godly characteristics yeah. in our children long term? And I, that's not like a controlling thing. That shouldn't no. be. And it shouldn't be like, I want them to be a doctor and I want them to yeah. earn this much money yeah. and I want them to have a house in Chelsea or anything yeah. like that. Um, or even godly pursuits, like I want to have a child who's a missionary. Like the, yeah. I think that's very controlling. We shouldn't be doing that. But what we should be looking for is what, what aspects of um, who God what is what I love to see in my yeah. children yeah. Um, and praying those things mm. and for each of those each of us those things are different yeah and so we each have different things that God's given us that yes. we're really passionate about yeah. and I think that that's fine to pray mm. those things and say I really want my child to be really kind I want yeah. my child to be generous I want yeah. my child to to really be authentic in themselves yes. um, and to pray those early on and to write them down as yes, well and I if you're really if, if you're doing chat and catch if you've done the parenting for faith course and you've done chat and catch ask God what he wants for your yeah, children and write absolutely. those things down I know lots of my friends have got um like kind of a diary like a pre-birth yes, diary yes. that they then give to their children on their 18th birthday oh, these are the things we prayed for you and we believe god great. said I love that. giving them too early mm -hmm. i think is again can feel a little bit controlling yeah. but giving them later on and saying this is what we felt god mm. had for you um, mm. is a really powerful thing to remind you what god's already said to you about them it's yes. great isn't it so yeah. empowering yeah definitely and then obviously you know you've you've had your baby, you've got your little tiny person. <laughs> Life's kind of gone a bit more interesting. <laughs> You're all about the food <laughs> and the nappy changing and all that. But how can we create an environment when our children are just born, when we've got like the, the tiny baby stage, you know, what can we be doing as parents at that stage when they're really little still, but not necessarily giving back <laughs> Yes, <laughs> in, yes. A, in a communicating Ooh, way? It takes quite a long, a long it time, take a while. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I think my first thing to say about that is to be really kind to yourself. Yeah, um, so Because important. I, before before I had children, I was really involved in church work and leading staff. Yeah. And, uh, you know, whenever I'd go to a group, I'd have something to contribute. Yeah. And I would say, if that is you when you have a baby, that's fabulous. Yeah. Um, but that probably isn't the norm. Yeah. For most of us, we aren't getting enough sleep. We're really mm. tired. And we have like a full, fully like incompetent human being to look after <laughs> who can't like need go to the person. toilet yeah, yeah and they have to be fed yeah. and changed and fed again and then changed again yeah, yeah. I remember you know, trying to leave the house and just underestimating how long that would take it takes forever you know and it? you're just about to go and then you hear <laughs> and you're yeah. like oh, man. we were running late yeah. already yeah. and here well, we are again well, you put them in the car seat and somehow it manages to come out of their clothes yeah. onto the car seat yeah. you're like now I have like a whole Don't hour you. of clear up so be kind to yourself yes, don't good. have this as a as a task list yeah yeah um, and then look at the things that really bring you life in terms of your spiritual life so yeah. the things that you used to be able to do you may well not be able to do so don't beat yourself yeah. up but what, how could you convert those into something that fits into your new reality yeah, into it. this season I know that it is a season it does change my children didn't both sleep through the night until they were about seven yeah so I was in that season for a really that really long, a long time. time um so and I was an avid reader previous yeah. to that didn't didn't really read a book for seven years, wow. which was yeah, yeah a really you don't get long, long time. enough to get no. into a story, do you? No, you kind of no. just get in it like oh, gotta go. And I was exhausted; like yeah. my brain just couldn't do it. Whenever yeah. I needed sleep, I just had to sleep. But I found audiobooks, yeah. podcasts, watching TED talks, that yeah. kind of thing. Things that are short and snappy. Yeah. Um, having them on your phone, obviously, yes. and having them starred so you can just go in and go. These are my four faves, and you yeah. can listen to them. You can even listen to them again if you fall yeah, asleep during the yeah. can't <laughs> which you? Probably happen. Uh, yes, I like that you can hear the Bible as well that way because yes. sometimes reading the Bible is a different, you know, trying to navigate probably feeding a baby with a Bible on your lap can be logistically quite a challenge, yeah. but having an audio Bible is another way yeah. you can and it's hear the cheating. word and it's speaking over you, even yeah. if you're not feeling like you're processing. I, I don't think that listening to a story is cheating. Yeah. Um, I, we listen in our home ed. We, we do lots of audio books as well as reading books, as well as reading two books. Like when you're in church and the Bible's read to you, do you yeah. think that's cheating? Yeah. No, no. somebody's reading God's yeah, word yeah. to you. That's not cheating. It's still um, feeding you. Having something it? like, if you haven't come across it, Lectio 365 oh, yes. five, yeah, um, is brilliant. That. So There's that's one for like, families, isn't there? There's one for families. Well, but when you're in the little stage, that yeah. family's one is, is, not, yeah. is not accessible to yes. you. But the, the, the more, 
morning and evening prayers are 10 minutes Great. and they take you through a whole kind of selection of prayers and things that you can either read on your phone or you can listen to. Yeah. I, I haven't actually read a whole one at all because I've just listened to it. And it's <laughs> yeah, just wonderful yeah. being able to switch it on for 10 minutes and stick it in in a headphone. Yeah. And it doesn't have to be, you might find you get 10 minutes in a chair on your own with a yeah. hot drink. <laughs> you may find you do it over the washing up or while you're feeding the baby or yeah. while you're changing the your <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Needs must. Yeah, and if you're on the loo, make sure you hide chocolate in the cupboard <laughs> in the bathroom. It's my top tip for parenting. That is a great <laughs> shot. <laughs> Keep your Mommy's sweets away from the children. Going? <laughs> She's having a quiet time. <laughs> quiet time with Jesus and some chocolate. Yeah, well, I'm sure he'd be there and enjoying it too. Yeah. Um, the um, Helen Goldenberg has written a really great yeah. book about pregnancy um, and little babies. They're yes. Helen and Ollie um, called. Um, Jesus, Your Baby, Your Pregnancy, which is yeah. a really good one. So if you're either pregnant or have really little yes. ones, that's a really good book to look for. That's cool. We'll put um, the links to that in the notes. Then. But other things like if, so I would say if you really miss your quiet time reading the Bible, then find creative ways to do that. Yeah. If you really miss being able to stand in worship for 30 to 40 minutes on your own, yeah. Uh, yeah, without anyone touching you. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, good luck with that. That's how it is <laughs> for quite a while. A long time. Um, <laughs> but you can, you know, we live in an age of Spotify. You can mm -hmm. make whatever playlist. Maybe yeah. contact someone at your church. If you're too tired to make your own playlist, yeah, yeah. get the worship leader at your church yes. who doesn't have a baby yet yeah. to make a, a playlist of the 50 songs that are most yeah. currently sung in your church and then Such just stick idea. that on. Stick it on in headphones. Stick yeah. it on when you're going around the house. Yes. And then you've just got the opportunity to worship. And also you have your baby who has yeah. the opportunity to worship so they're exposed to it we shouldn't understand we shouldn't expect them to not be worshiping yeah. um, we have this thing in our house where we think that um babies have just come from god that they're kind of like fresh from heaven yeah. and so we kind of imagine oh, yeah. them as people who are expert at worshiping expert yes. at, at praying at imagining god's things and when children start to speak the amazing stuff they come out with does suggest that they are really yeah. very spiritual beings from very yeah. early on they just can't speak and why just because not being able to speak doesn't make you spiritual yeah. does it no that's um, right so who knows what babies are doing during those early yeah. days when they're hearing and seeing all that stuff yeah, going yeah. on i do believe as well you know children have a ministry whatever age you are and how I know little babies who've been held by someone and just their smile or their peace has ministered to somebody and they're like wow I just felt really different when I held your child then and you're yes. like they've got a ministry even from yes. that age I love that yeah we had a baby in our church who was young enough that she couldn't stay at home while her mum was training to do prayer ministry so yeah. the baby did the prayer ministry course <laughs> and then the baby would go around with her mum and pray for people so by the time she got to the end of the course she was about six months old wow. so being held she yeah. could put her hand on people um, and and people would feel God's yeah, presence yeah. when when Hannah so ministered good. to them. So you know, it's yeah. it's never too young to start that stuff. No, I think that's great, and keeping that expectation, isn't it? And um, we're running the Parenting for Faith in Under Fives course at the moment here, and it's been really interesting chatting to other families about how we can nurture faith in our homes in a really practical way mm. we were chatting yesterday about how you just out in nature you're looking at the trees and you can thank God for what he's made but also ask God to speak through the we talk about speaking through the birds and how he looks after the birds so he can look after you and just sowing scripture through just normal everyday life um a lot of the families were chatting about how they love hearing music like we were just mm. saying and one of the families has created a playlist so we can share the link to that brilliant <laughs> um and it was really helpful because they shared their playlist with some other families who then could go and listen to it at home so i think you know anything we've tried ourselves can be passed on to others and not you know just yeah. having a community where we all look after one another is really yeah. helpful isn't and we it? don't have to be experts in no, it i mean, in order to do that and to find our thing that works yeah. for us for rather than feeling like we have to do yeah. have to be doing worship and we have to listen to a yeah. bible podcast yeah. and we have to be doing praying for the poor and That's you know, it. we don't have to be doing all of that no. stuff but finding the thing that really feeds you spiritually yeah, yeah. and will also feed your family yeah and i think um one of the big things isn't it about how as a parent looking after our own spiritual walk is really important mm -hmm. that our time with God however it looks however many, many minutes you get of it is really important because we, we've talked a number of times in this podcast series about how we model what we live in mm -hmm. our everyday life so if we're full of God and full of what he's saying to us it's going to overflow in our everyday life are there any suggestions you've got on how to help families develop that spiritual walk for themselves at that stage when you've got little people and <laughs> I know you've touched a little bit. Can you expand any more on yeah, some of those I'm, things? Yeah, I think, I think finding ways 
to to meet with God's people. Yeah. Um, that's another one that for me, I found that's where I didn't know this until I had children and meeting God's people changed completely. Yeah. But yeah. I found that I needed to find new ways of doing that. Yeah. Um, for me, I found a group of mums who did like a small group during the day. Yeah. And so we'd go Brilliant. and we'd meet with our babies and we'd literally sit and we'd like put a big mat out with a whole load of stuff and, and you know, non-edible things yeah. for the children to, <laughs> to play with. Draw wherever they like. And then we did, we did like a, you know, and it was short. It wasn't sort of drawn out, but it was, we probably spent a couple of hours together because we had okay. like cake and coffee yeah, and yeah, stuff. Oh, and always. there was lots of there's changing. There's always cake, and, isn't there? Yeah, there's changing and feeding and feeding <laughs> yeah, yeah. and changing, you know. <laughs> yeah. um, but I needed to find something that was during the day because yeah. it took me years until I was actually able to leave my children mm. um, and to go out in an evening. Yeah. And so it was really important to me that that was available to, yeah. to be able to do that during the day. Just have another community of people who look after each other yes and then you can build each other up can't you and yeah. share what God's doing in your life and it's like oh yeah and lots <laughs> and of us are something my together. children are now you know this is 10 years ago and lots of us are still friends with each other now that's we've great. got children who are 10 11 12 yeah. and so we get to share that part of the journey together yeah, as yeah. well yeah that's so very good cool. I think um I just remember a lady totally liberating me here one one week you know we were saying earlier how it's a, like a military operation isn't it to get out of the house and I remember just I must have been <laughs> I must have turned up for church looking a bit frazzled and she went Lisa, it's okay. You just being here is your act of worship today. And I went, gosh, that's so true. God knows that the trauma it was to get out the house this morning. You know, like you said earlier, you know, there's always something that happens as you're going out the door and you think you're there and you don't. And um, it just so released me in my mind to think God sees the, the, the before. He sees it's not about getting to the church on the Sunday, bang on time. And obviously we all aspire to do that the best we can. But there's God sees everything. He sees mm. the before. He sees the, the effort. He sees the we tried. <laughs> and I think just liberating ourselves from the the pressure to and the condemnation we sometimes put on ourselves as parents to to look like we've got it all together all the time that actually there are weeks when things just go pear shaped. These are independent little people mm, <laughs> and yeah. they don't even know what they're doing sometimes. And you lose the, the favorite toy as you're walking out the door and like, that's that. Life cannot move on till we yeah. found the missing teddy. And um, I just think it was quite freeing. I found that really yeah, helpful yeah. to kind of go, my worship right now is just being and yeah. trying. <laughs> and not only our worship, but also how we best help our children to grow in faith yeah. is actually through the day-to-day -day really quite yeah, boring, absolutely. drudgery things that we do. Yeah. So um, in terms of faith development, there are depending on who you read. There are lots of different stages yes, depending there are. on who you read. Yeah. I really like Francis Bridges' okay. model, which looks at faith as trusting, I'm going to not remember them now, so as trusting, um, as believing, imagining and doing. Yes. And the first stage that children have to do, that we all have to do, even if you come to faith as an adult, is trusting. Yeah. You can't trust Jesus if you can't trust yeah. another human. Because yeah. so trusting someone who is invisible yes. um, is very difficult. Yes, it takes it quite a lot of imagination <laughs> yes, to trust an invisible yes. person. Um, and that we have to grow our like trust muscles. Yeah. And that is what babies are doing. So yeah. under the age of five, that's a big thing that children are doing in terms of faith development. Yeah. And how do we learn to trust? We learn to trust by experiencing somebody doing what they've said they're going to do yeah. on multiple occasions. Yes. So being somebody, being reliable, um, yeah, in caring for us, yeah. basically. So the fact that when a baby's nappy is dirty, you change it, yes. is building trust in God, yeah. which is yeah. a strange thing to think, but isn't it? But it's so you know? true, isn't it? Because you're reliable. Yes. You, you're going to come back when you go out. Yeah. You're going to feed me because when I'm hungry... Yeah. And I mean, and that is obvious when you say it like that, it's yeah. obviously actually God, isn't yeah. it? So all Absolutely. of the things that we do, we protect our children, we care for our children, we provide for them, yeah. all that stuff. That is what God does for all of us. Yes. Um, so but it's true. really difficult. So when lots of studies have looked at children who don't receive that care yeah. and those children go on to be adults who find trust in any humans yeah. and also in God really, really yeah. tough to do. And so we know that. No, almost nothing needs to actually look like it's happening. So you don't need to do any devotional yes. time. You don't yep. need to even go to church. You don't yep. need to read the Bible. You, if you, Just by caring for your children, you are yeah. actually helping their faith grow. Yeah. And sometimes that's that's what some parents need to hear. Yes. So that's you this week. And that's all you've done this week <laughs> is change nappies and feed your kids. You are you've, helping them grow in faith, them which love. is amazing. Yeah, in it's amazing. normal life, it's yeah. so good, isn't it? And, you know, children do go through different stages, don't they? And obviously... Um, what they need at different stages of development will change as they mm -hmm. get older. And, you know, if we're thinking about like a toddler stage now, we're moving on to like a different stage of development. What different things can we do? How do we, how can we change up 
what we do with children as they grow yeah. <laughs> and they their understanding of the world changes in different so ways. I would say um, one of the easiest ways to engage with faith at home is through story. Yeah. And we all love story, adults and children, everyone loves story. So, And the better you get at it and the more you do it, the better you get yeah, at yeah, it. Yeah, so, you, so as they grow, and to be fair, when children are little, they don't need much no. to make a story happen, do no, they? No, that's true. Um, so I would say <laughs> starting by sharing um, our story and yeah. the story of the Bible yeah. um, with children from a really, really young age. So we read with our girls from the point that before they could even sit up, we yeah. would just sit them on our laps and we would sit and read yeah, stories to them. And we would tell them Bible verses that we loved. Like I remember yeah. when just after I'd, I'd given birth and I was whisked off to theatre and my husband was left, this like terrified man, <laughs> with um, a, a newborn baby. Yeah, yeah. And they, you know, he knew to take his shirt off and put yeah. it on. It was like skin an issue to skin. skin time. You know? <laughs> yeah. kind of but he, he then spent over an hour sitting whispering to my daughter, um... Bible verses and things wow. that he loved. Now, I think half of that was because he was terrified yeah. about me disappearing <laughs> off. Like, yeah. is she going to come back? Um, but but, his, great way to but his instinct was to respond with with prayer and yeah. with Bible verses. And so right from a tiny age, he was sharing um, stories from the Bible with love her. Um, I think f- that children would, children respond really, really well from that right from birth. And I think as soon as you've got a toddler and you're able to read Tabby McTat or whatever their favourite story <laughs> yeah. is, you can tell them Bible stories. Yes. Probably be a little bit careful about which ones you choose. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> there, are, so, you know, there are some that are perhaps so special for later. Try not to go for the X-rated ones, which there <laughs> yeah. are quite a lot in the yeah, Bible. Yeah. Um, but go for the ones that you know. Go yeah. for, and go for ones that are really speaking to you mm-hmm. as well. So sometimes we might feel like to do the Bible properly at home, yes. you've got to have like a curriculum. Yeah. And you know, we, we think of what and... happens at church. And, be, and the only reason church has a curriculum is because they don't want to do the lost sheep every week that is <laughs> yeah, the main reason true. we have a curriculum <laughs> and you want to cover lots of different stuff yeah, yeah. okay and um, we know that most children don't go to church every week anyway so mm. it really wouldn't matter for little mm. children if they did do the lost sheep every week yeah, no, but as children's workers we need to do different things we want to want to keep it yeah, yeah. keep it varied but when you're at home you can tell them the bit of the bible that god is speaking to you through yeah. or the story that is really coming to yes. life for you at the moment and actually for somebody who's under the age of four you can actually just repeat that story. Yeah, you yeah. can do that story Repetition in lots of different so good ways. For them, isn't it? They love it. They yeah. absolutely love it. I mean, if you look at um, Teletubbies, which was designed with basically on the research done by psychologists of how children learn. Wow. The Teletubbies, they basically <laughs> do the same thing again, don't they? Yeah, they tell the they story really and they're do. like, get great again. for kids. Not so great for mum no, and dad. <laughs> no. Makes you go, makes you feel like you're going slightly mental. Yeah, yeah. But then um, they just go again and again and then they tell the mm, whole story again. So yeah. I would recommend that as a model for yeah. sharing a story with your child of telling the story and then tell them the story again. Yes. And really I think simple. sometimes even just exploring situations that happen in our life, we can relate it to a story as well, can't mm. we? You know, like, oh, I remember a story in the Bible about that. Let's look at it together. And, you know, the, if you were lost and you were felt afraid and we talk about yeah. things that were lost and God found them. And, you know, I think it's just helpful to relate your story in real life with the Bible and totally. a true story that we heard about then. It's the same and God there and now. And their experience of things in the world. So if you're out at a farm and you're looking at a sheep and if you're out there with like a two and a three year old and they suddenly decide that sheep are the most exciting thing yeah. that God has made, yeah. they, you know, might not be right, but you know, that's what they think <laughs> at that, that point. Time. Yeah? yeah. And then you can go, oh, do you know what? I know a story about a sheep. And they'll be like, oh, do you? Yeah. And then you can say, yeah, there was this sheep and like, he, he just, he just kept wandering off and yeah. the shepherd kept telling him to come back and, and he really liked wandering off. So he like one day he snuck off really bad, like really snuck off and the shepherd couldn't find him anywhere yeah. so the shepherd had to lock up all the other sheep so they couldn't escape and wander off and they had to go out looking for the, sh- the sheep yeah. and they looked everywhere and everywhere. can you see the sheep here can you imagine do you think he's a wanderer is he a wandering off sheep well do you know what that shepherd did when he found that sheep picked it up can you imagine picking up that sheep? It's really yeah. heavy. Put it on his shoulder and he brought it back. And then okay. do you know what he did? He had a party. Had a party yeah. with his friends just for that one sheep. Can you imagine? That's how much he loved that sheep. And the Bible says that's how much God loves us. And that's yeah. like, you know, 20 seconds. Yeah. But and you're, you're still so, looking you're at the sheep. Seeds in it. <laughs> yeah. And they're still like, looking oh, at that's it. so yeah. cool. Yeah. And they will remember yeah. that. You don't even have to wait because I would. some people will be thinking, oh, I need to. Yeah. We've seen a sheep. I yeah. need to write a quick note to myself on my <laughs> yeah. phone. When you I know, get home, Google the between tea and the nappy change. We must remember doesn't have to be no. that um, and that's where feeding ourselves and making sure that we have some stories up our sleeve that's yeah. what how I feel, feel like it's kind of literally like having a little story yeah. up my sleeve so and I'm just looking for the right moment and God yeah. knows that so yeah, if you've does. got a story up your sleeve God will make sure that you see a sheep that that's week right. so that you can share the, the sheep story yeah. you've got up your it's sleeve it's amazing how he does that isn't it yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah it's so good so the other thing I would say and we've got loads of stuff out here which yeah, I want yeah. to show you is um, use the stuff that you have so children we a third of the population are primarily kinesthetic. So yes. we're a quarter of us, are, a third of us are visual, a third of us yeah. are auditory, a third of us are kinesthetic. Under the age of seven, most of us are yeah, kinesthetic. Um, Some of us so, stay there for a long time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm still sure. there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but having stuff that you can 
touch and feel yeah. and do and not just don't take on the role of the teacher so lots of people Sorry. do this like in Sunday school you're like so I'm going to have like loads of things like, I'm going to like take these yeah and I'm, go- I'm going to hold the things and I'm going <laughs> to tell you gonna, a story Lisa you know? yeah, yeah. no you say oh, you know, I know the story about a man Oh, what sort of a man do you think he was? He was a really rich man. Do you want to hold my man for me? Yeah. And then you hold the man, and then I tell, and then I say, and that man, um, he just he was in a fight with a really big man. Yeah, a really massive man. The man was so big, everyone was terrified of him. They said he was a giant. Did you know this story about giants in the Bible? Love it. Really. And then you got that, but then you can have it, and then I'll give you the other one, and then you you. can play with the things. See how big they are. Yeah, and you can see, and you can feel it, and (laughs) you can touch it, and you can stick it in your ear, you know, and you can chew on it, you know, you can do whatever you want (laughs) want with it. Yeah. But uh, but holding the thing means that you're suddenly engaged, and you're like, so how is this guy going to win a fight against that guy? Oh, I don't know. (laughs) He looks really small, doesn't he? Maybe we've got something that he could use, and then you might find something. We we haven't got anything we can use as a thing here. We might. I would get if I was at home, I'd get a pair of knickers because they're good, <laughs> good for a twang a good, yeah, yeah. <laughs> good, for, good twang yeah yeah get a pair of knickers and it doesn't matter that it's not you yeah. know that I'm not going to put it on YouTube because <laughs> it's my knickers you know um, yeah, and I'm not going to do it in the front of church because it's my knickers yeah, yeah. but it's my kids but it so I just get to do it and we say well, he yeah. had he had um, a thing to throw stones now yeah. obviously we don't want to throw stones at home but we could use knickers and see I wonder how far we could throw something <laughs> with knickers and then yeah, you yeah. Find it. I wonder if we could throw the man with the knickers you know yeah. and, then, and then it becomes make fun. It fun and then you talk about the story about David killed Goliath with just one stone and yeah. how God was with him and that's how it happened yeah, and so then good. it's and it's kinesthetic yeah, and it means that when your child goes back to these things they will be able to replay that story yeah. and then I would say so you tell the story and then say oh should we do the story again yeah. and if you've got a child who's under four they're going to say yes yes um, and, and then you say oh so who should we start with and then you're starting to oh we started with this man uh, what do we know about him what do we do about yeah. him and if your child can speak then they can talk about it yeah. if your child can't speak you just say who are we going to start with and they can hold him up yeah. so like from the age of six months a child can hold on to a toy yeah, like that yeah, exactly. and they can they can tell me and children can point and tell you which things they want yeah, by the yeah. age of six months so they can choose which thing they have or where we yeah. put it and what we do with it so they can actually be engaged with that really from a good. really young age uh, having Remember more by holding and interacting, totally. don't they? Yes, definitely. Totally. And then they can actually, stuff. then when you watch them playing, you'll see that yeah. they, so I would say, tell the story, retell the story, and then step back. Um, there's a, a great um, home educator called Charlotte Mason. She calls yeah. it masterly inactivity. Ooh, like and it basically that. means you set out the stuff, you set out the feast yeah. of, of stuff, and um, and then you step back and you watch what children do. And if we really believe that children are spiritual beings, mm-hmm. their spirit will respond yes. to that story we've just told yes. them. Um, and if you only do it once with your child, they will probably respond by just bashing it on their head and doing stuff <laughs> yeah. with it. But as you give them more and more it. opportunities to free play yeah. after telling a story, yeah, you'll yeah. see that they actually start to process mm. that story in their play. Yeah. And you have to, you, and you can't just sit back for two minutes and expect them no. to be like, oh, I'm just going to pray to Jesus with the dolls. It doesn't no. happen. <laughs> but it happens over a slow period yeah, of time, yeah. giving them access to stuff that they can, that you tell Bible stories yeah. with and that you intentionally give those things spiritual yeah. power, basically, yeah, in your I home. And then children can go back and get them out whenever they want yes. and they can play with them. Because yeah. So which one am I today? Am I the giant or am I the little person? Yeah. How do I feel? Feel about the situation, and they can do that. They're not going to say that stuff to you. No, that's but, gonna, but that's all. But going they can on. use the toys to be the other exactly. mediator to sort of explain what's feeling inside. Exactly. Yeah, yeah really yeah. good. And not necessarily explain it to us, but doing it themselves yeah, yeah. and watching what they're doing. I remember one time when my eldest was, I think she must have been eighteen months. So when I had kids, I. Um, one of the first things I did, have I brought things with me? I haven't brought my Playmobil with me. So Playmobil <laughs> is not really very under five yeah. friendly toy, is it? Yeah. So um, so when I had kids, I bought it immediately. Mainly because I'd been a children's so worker cool. for years and I'd wanted yeah, yeah. the Playmobil nativity set for yes. a long while. And because I had my own children, some, suddenly that was like allowed. It wasn't necessary. So I had to teach them how to... My children weren't big eaters, so I was lucky. Um and I remember telling them the Christmas story, telling uh, um, the first year. So I, my children are really close together. So the year Jessica was born, Sophia was only 18 months. And right. I told her the Christmas story before when she was only six months and then told her it again the next yeah. year when she was 18 months. And I told her it with the little people and we just introduced the different stories. You know, and this is, this is the Mother Mary and this, <laughs> is, and this is the Father Joseph. And, yeah. um, and we had them all out. And, um, and, and then I went off to make myself a cup of tea 
um, which I could just about do. I used to have to like, you know, you have to run off to the kitchen, put yeah. the kettle on, yeah, come, back, come back, still alive, go back, yeah, put the tea bag in, on. come back. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's progressive tea. Still at that stage. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I remember popping back and I stood at the door of the room and she was at the other end by the window and she was just holding the Mary character mm. and she was just stroking her and holding oh. her really, really, really carefully. Mm. And then she put her down um, and she picked up the baby Jesus and she gave him a kiss. Oh. And I was like, oh, that is the most amazing worship. And I was like, I know that Jesus is watching that. Yeah. Yeah. Going, she's kissing my head. <laughs> yeah, I love it. You know, yeah, yeah, it was just it, it was, was a real really real. It was a it. real thing, you know. Mm-hmm. And it was and it was something that she wouldn't have been able to do in a church situation. No. At all. It was only because it was in our home yeah. and that she was left alone yeah. to respond to it how she wanted to. And yeah. it wasn't straight after I told the story. No. She'd gone and got those pieces they process out it over time, don't they? Exactly. As well. It takes a while. I'm, I remember when I worked in a nursery for a few years, and one of the, the ladies there says, like, incredibly wise to me. Do you remember old cassette players? Do you remember the ones oh, yeah. you stick a cassette in, <laughs> press the buttons? Yeah. For those of you too young, sorry, but <laughs> yeah. there were. Things called remember. cassettes, and you press. <laughs> you, do you remember the one that it was like a, a box, and you press play and fast forward and rewind, yes. stop, and if you press it hard, it ejected. Yes. And then there was record. Yeah, that was a revolutionary so when very record came out. Record <laughs> things. Um, and she said, and actually, you had to press down record and play at the same yes, time. Do you remember? I had one of those. She yeah. said, children can't press record and play at the same time. She said they are either on record. Or they're on play. Okay. So they're either absorbing yeah. or they're responding. Yeah. And so often as adults, we, we probably are the same, yeah. but we do it quite fast. Yes. So you can say something to me and I can say something back. Yes. And whereas a young child, you have to say something to them mm-hmm. and then you have to pause yeah. and wait. Because yeah. they have to they're be They're still able making to the connections, it. I guess, aren't they? Whereas we're building on some connections that are already there. Yes. So yeah. And, we, and when they're that. building neurons in their brains, they're like I mean, linking they're very all, busy, the aren't they? all the time. <laughs> Everything you know? is learning, isn't it? They reckon that children learn more between the age of naught and two than you do for the rest rest of your life it's amazing which is incredible it? so for me that says i would definitely want to put in some god stuff yeah yeah first totally years. it's like why would you you, know, yeah, you don't yeah. just want to get them to learn how to speak you want yes. to get them to learn how to yes. do all the god stuff get your foundations too. in so telling stories with physical things yeah. is really really important and that can be with anything that you have so i've just brought some examples here so yeah, these, these are some, some um, great props here <laughs> these are some um wooden spoons that we've Fab. made in our house so these are ones i've made so they look quite fancy can i hold some of these have some of those. i like to yeah. touch um, them for you. and these are some that i've made my children have made and um, we have quite a few animals that always happens yeah yeah um and these Animals. What we've done is we've tried to do different faces on different sides. Yeah. Um, so and obviously my children are a bit older, but these could totally be used with under yeah. fives. Um, so, you know, and it's, if you have a, um, a few children, you will have some that are under five and some that are not. This so this is, is a great way yeah. to have your older children make things that everybody so can use. So different feelings on each side as yes. well. Yeah. So when you're telling the story... Everybody who's holding a spoon can be a character yes. and they can get to show you how that character is feeling. And so you can tell any pretty much any story in the Bible yeah. and pause two or three times during the story and say, how do you think your character felt right yes. now? Um, you know, they might want to draw something on. You know, yes. if you have to be not. Not, yeah, yeah, not fast about different that. emotions. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> At that point in the story. And that is a really good it's way really of helping us connect yeah. our own emotions with the, yeah. with the Bible and with how God sees us. You can us. feel a almost how God's feeling in this moment as well can't you yeah. like take it to a different level as they're yeah. a bit older what might God be feeling in this story yes. as they get yeah, to yeah. like the as they, younger yeah. primary age sort of I guess yes. Um, so they are really fun. Um, they're great. They, and they're something that you can keep and you can keep reusing. I yes. just bought those so just really faces, cheap they? spoons. We drew those with pencil um, and then just drew over it with pen. Yeah. It does bleed a little bit into it because they're wooden. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it's really, really easy I mean, to do. And, to pick up, and they, they don't need to be professional. We're not trying to make professional it's spoons. It's just for home, isn't it? It's just, it's just something to use. Yeah. So Or you could go for something that's even more basic. <laughs> See, I love these. These have been sat on the table for a while and we're like, what? Have we got you nearly breadsticks with eyes? You nearly didn't get these. So these are breadsticks <laughs> with edible eyes. Edible okay. eyes. Where do you get edible, edible eyes? eyes? So you That's get edible so cool. eyes from Amazon. Um, I'm sure there are other places. Cake I'm shops, sure. basically. Yeah, yeah. Get edible eyes. They're just sugar. And yeah. then all I've used to stick them on is icing sugar. Great. So icing sugar with a little with tiny bit of, bit of water. And then you dub that onto the top of your breadstick yeah. and then stick these your edible fun. eyes on there. And then suddenly they are people. Yes. Um, and you can tell the story. You could tell the story of David and Goliath. We've done this before. So this is David. Yeah. And that's Goliath. Nice. Um, you can, you know, and then somebody can have a little chew. Sitting on that. <laughs> chew a bit of giant. <laughs> Everybody is happy to play a story of the Bible with yes. edible eyes. Like my children are 9 11. They're still, they're going to eat these. They're going to use these. Such a great and they're going to gonna do want it. a story as they're eating yeah. it. So. so they can tell the story. You can tell the story. And then it's all. Yeah. 
Well, and then, then it's, and then it's all just playing. It's fun. Yeah. We in our house, lots of things. Um, Bible stuff is around. Happens around food. Yes. So we do quite food a lot is a winner with kids, isn't it? It really is because if in doubt, you and, feed them. And, and with <laughs> so, me, and also yes. we sometimes forget as adults how often children need feeding. Yes. And so if you have food as part of your story, yeah. you can you can get around the fact that somebody might be hungry during the story because you've just <laughs> yeah. got food. So. Makes that time full of faith. Yeah. Exactly. Love I remember it. once at the breakfast table doing a um, the story of Jacob's ladder mm-hmm. using toast with chocolate spread on it and and i just got my gingerbread cutter from the yeah. kitchen and cut out the people so we told uh, the thing yeah. with the people and then we cut up the rest of it and made it into the ladder and things and i just so cool. literally like a minute that. and a half and we just did having a gingerbread cutter in your house it's a win isn't it, it it's a win for life yeah like just i still have one of mine are like 15 and 20 <laughs> my daughter likes making all sorts out of cutters yeah. it's so cu- I, I do have quite a big um, drawer of cutters but the gingerbread man is one of the most useful ones to have i've also got a set that are um, in a tin and little tiny people that you yes. can cut out which is also really useful but basically anything you can make into a person yes. in your house you can tell a bible story, story with yeah um, you can tell a bible story with dinosaurs so some people are looking at this and going yeah but you have girls victoria i have boys <laughs> yeah you can dinosaurs tell us yeah and cars trains is, yeah, cars wheels. you can tell a story with whatever you can tell a story with toothbrushes. Yeah, so tell like, me about know. this. This is <laughs> so, so for me. Are these people? So you? these are people. Yeah. So yeah. you could draw people. You could draw faces on them. Like yeah, you and yeah. I might need that because yeah, we're yeah. adults. But if you they were three, don't. I'd just be like, "Hello, my name's Joseph. Oh, my <laughs> name's Ruben. I don't like you." you know? <laughs> yeah. There's always a wax somewhere, <laughs> isn't there? Yeah. You can you can do that, and so that means mm. you can you can go. These are special toothbrushes I have bought because I do stuff with other people's yes. families, so I didn't do yes, my own toothbrush. Yeah, yeah. You can do them with your toothbrushes yeah, yeah. at home, and then while you're doing your teeth, you can do a story. Yeah. Uh, toothbrushes you know it's not so you can even make keeping hygienically clean fun and faith and faith exactly (laughs) and whatever whatever you whatever the time is whatever the slot is that works for you yeah you should you should use that yeah. instead Go of feeling natural. like you've got to do yeah. like a devotional like mm. I remember my I, my parents are Christians and I remember um, them sitting at us at the table after dinner on a Sunday afternoon so we'd been to church yep. for a long while yep. then we'd had dinner and then they got this devotional book which yes. they, somebody had obviously told them this is a good thing to do um, and they wanted to do like devotionals and I remember they yeah. made it happen for a while but like we all hated it like, like, I was almost like how much <laughs> God can you cope with in one yeah, day yeah. like it's like, way too much sitting yeah. around going on here you know and when they took us out for rides on our bikes at the park instead there was a lot more God involved yes, <laughs> yes. but that's <laughs> so moments. true isn't it and I think you know thankfully I think we've moved on quite a bit haven't yes. we and how we understand how we can communicate with our children on a very normal and they just want real life don't they yeah. they need to see it as part of every day not not the formal Sunday only we get everything in on a Sunday and then we'll leave yeah, you on your own totally. to fend for yourself <laughs> Monday to Saturday yeah. Yeah. and then we're back again and it, and we shouldn't also we shouldn't uh, underestimate the impact of the positive relationship so some recent yeah. studies looked at um, what are the factors which make it more likely for a child to be an adult yeah. Christian and the biggest factor beyond everything else was um positive relationships within yes. the home so yeah. actually if you have to fight your kids to do god stuff yeah. you should stop fighting yes. them because actually the fight is not winning yeah. what you want it's to what, do actually saying, you should it? you should find another and there are there are so many different mm. ways that you can do this in different times yeah. different places you yes. can do it you'll find your own family way won't you and yeah and i guess as they get older you, you and have to you've change got different, it. I mean, my have to change children are completely time, different personalities. You? So what works with one, you have to adapt for the other. Yep. And I think it's just being mindful of what that child will respond to at that stage Absolutely. in their life, isn't it? Yeah. And I, I was, um, whenever I'm working with families, I get people to work out how old their family is. So we sit down <laughs> and you have to add up the age of everybody who lives okay. in your house. Yeah. Um, and then we and then we just have a thing. We're like, who's uh, who's over 20? Who's over 30? Yeah. And then there's always one family who's got like, I know, 25 children and they're <laughs> yeah. like 420 or something, <laughs> yeah, you know? Yeah. Um, but then I say to them, okay, so can you, if I ask you to do this again in six months time, how would that have changed? And yeah. everybody's recalculating because most people will have had a few birthdays in yes. their family. And I'm like, yeah. so you'll be a different age. Your family will be a yes. different age. So you're all different ages from each other, almost always in a room, yeah. everyone's a different age. And in six months' time, that will be different. And that gives you an idea of how much we, how fluid our family yes. is. Yes. And how, because we're a group of unique individuals, we're a unique group of unique yeah. individuals. Yes. And so it's going to change, isn't yeah, it? It's yeah. going to be different. And you say, we've got to find the thing that works now, today. Yes. Which is why when you start today you only need to find the thing that works for you today today you don't have to find the thing that you're going to do when they're five or ten or twenty you can find that out later on that's it and i think talking to other people like we said before about who are in a similar stage you kind of go what are you doing if if you're struggling to kind of be 
it, we don't have to always be creative, do we? It's about just making the most of a moment, being um, a bit more intentional yeah. in actually looking yeah. for those moments, I guess, because sometimes they don't just happen, do they? We have to kind of make the most of an opportunity yes. rather than yeah. creating something false. It's just making the most of a moment that yeah, is yeah. already happening. And having that thing up your sleeve so you can slip it out when you when you have it. And also um, just being aware of what the Holy Spirit's doing. So the Holy yeah. Spirit will often prompt you yeah. to have a thing of, and you might so you might want to share a psalm with your children. Now they're yeah. slightly more difficult because they're not a story. <laughs> yeah. um, but you will probably find a moment during the week when if a, if a psalm is speaking to you, yeah. there will be an opportunity to link something that you're talking about with your child with the psalm yes. that you're currently meditating yes. on and being ministered to by right. with your child because it's it's in you it's yeah. there kind of thing so it's I love, overflowing isn't it i love that psalm um psalm 139 it's yeah where can i where can i go from your presence yeah, lord you search me you know me there's a little verse in there that i've loved for years which says when i awake i'm still with you mm. and i just love that yeah and that for me that's something that you can talk about in the morning in yeah. the evening and um, you can do it when you're changing the bed sheets yes. you know for me it, it clocks into my life yes. lots of different ways because that's what the holy spirit yeah, does with us. Yeah. so it's just being aware that not just letting the Holy Spirit talk to you but just making it so it's like an open window so that yeah, you also get to really good. waft it at your kids as well. Yeah, yeah, totally. I was listening to a family yesterday who was saying that their son opens the curtains and goes, hello world, thank you God for the world. And oh, it's almost lovely. like he wakes up with God. It's like his mm. instinct now already because of the culture they've created in the home is to kind of wake up with God and I think that's amazing. It's such a great way to start the day, isn't it? It's really, <laughs> so, really cool. And I remember another family, they were, um, they um, do lots of sensory play at home with different um, activities and um, she was saying how one of the children was we I think we'd done the story of Jonah in kids on Sunday and uh, her daughter had been exploring it a bit more at home and uh, she kept running in and out the room and she was like what, what is she doing where, where is she coming <laughs> and her daughter just kept coming back going I'm running away and she's like where are you running she's like oh and she realised after she worked it out that we'd done the story journey and he, he ran away and then he came back and, and she said, oh, I was able to explore how wow. that was her way of internalising the story. Yeah. And she was trying to do it with the brother and kind of saying, oh, let's run away. You That's know? really and God cool. God said, come back, you know. And she'd totally taken on board that that part of the story that mm. God sent, asked them to do something and they re- the person ran away and mm, came back amazing. to God and, and she was how, like and how kinesthetic is that yeah, yeah you know, so it she was like Wednesday I think she did it you know <laughs> <laughs> so it was like yeah how do I make this connection but it's it, you know I've, I've heard stories of this for families you know so I think I, you know it just validates all that you're saying it's so good just being creative and letting your children explore and have the freedom to do that. It's really good, yeah. isn't it? I think the thing that's hardest for us as parents is that we're not very good at play anymore. No. Um, and when you ask parents, when you ask adults to define play, mm-hmm. they first of all get very serious yeah. on you. Yeah. Um, and then they really struggle to kind of pin it down. Yeah. Um, because almost play, almost by definition, is not possible to pin down. Yes. That's what it's like. I yeah. describe it like if I had a feather in my hand and I dropped it, it would do this. Yeah. And we wouldn't know. We would know that it's going to fall, yeah. but we wouldn't know the route that it's going to get. And at any point, it could go off in any direction. Yes. And we're not sure what it's going to land on. And play is like that. Yeah. Play, True play, by definition, is something that we haven't planned yes. where it's going. Yes. We haven't got an outcome. It's the opposite of a of a lesson plan. Yes. It's, it's yeah. There is no planned outcome. Yeah. We're just going to do this just thing. Just spontaneous. See where something. it goes. Yeah. Um, another definition of it is that the rules have to be agreed by the players. Okay. Um, and so... So if you if you imagine like so if you're playing football, mm-hmm. all of the players have agreed to a set of rules. Yes. There are a set of rules yep. that everybody on the pitch has agreed to. Yeah. Um, and you have an umpire in a game, yeah. but the umpire is basically making sure that those that set of rules that everyone's agreed to are being adhered they to. They play to that set that. of rules. If you watch yep. children playing, they they go off and do their own thing and they organise themselves in rules. Yes. I've, I've, now my it. daughter's 11. I can ask her about this. Yeah. And she's sort of described to me how children in a group of maybe 10 or 12 children of different ages make the rules. Yes. So they basically start playing and then somebody gets annoyed at somebody else yeah. um, because they're doing something they didn't want them to do. And so then a small group, usually a subgroup within the group, get together and work out a way for the game to continue and that involves inventing a rule that wow, everybody is so happy with. And that then they insight, can carry yeah. on playing that. And then, and, and if it's something that involves everybody, then they all have to get together. They all have like to agree. Have a meeting yes. and they all have to come and agree this thing. So yeah. there's, there's this thing. And if, if somebody doesn't want to play by those rules, then either the group has to continue discussing that until they come to an agreement yep. or that person has to leave the game mm-hmm. or the game stops. That's yes. just how play is. Yeah. That's just how play works. That's so interesting. It's, it's really a, quite fascinating. But you're, it's it? so you know? true, isn't it? Yeah. It's but just, as adults, 
adults, we don't do that no. because we live in a world where lots of the rules are agreed out of our control yes, yeah. um, and that we're not part of it. Or yeah. we've already agreed the rules and we're not really sure. Like there's rules of like social engagement which yeah, we all yeah. adhere to. Yeah, exactly. kind of thing. You know, if somebody comes in and they stand right next to you, yeah. you know they're just obeying like, the rules. <laughs> um, but when we're looking at, um, the, the great thing about play is, um, and in terms of faith is it allows children to be able to explore and develop and to find faith for themselves, to yeah. find how this works, to discover how they relate to God, which yeah. won't be the same as us because mm. they're a unique individual. Yeah, yeah. And so it allows them to kind of to move around and do those. And as adults, we kind of want to like give them rules like, you know, you yes. need to read the whole Bible. Or <laughs> you need to read yeah. Joseph before you read Jesus or you need to read Jesus first before yes. you read the Old Testament. And actually giving children the freedom to just do what they want to do yeah. enables them to choose choose the thing that's right for them in yes. that moment like we said earlier about a mum yeah don't don't have a list of all the things you've got to do choose the thing that really brings you joy and brings yeah. you life and brings you close to god children are really good at doing that if yeah. adults don't interfere <laughs> yeah. know, they Getting just out of way. Do that. they don't yeah. feel guilty about stuff yeah um, because you know they don't know that there's a list that they should be doing and they don't you know? have to go through you at all do they to like authorize no. this is officially faith at home now no, no, <laughs> we've exactly. transitioned into a faith at they, home phase they just it's they just, just exploring. do it um and so i think that one of the things we can do at home as parents is we can learn and how to play from our children yeah. and that comes from actually just normal play don't think yeah. of it as spiritual play but just think of it as yeah. play I think play is a spiritual activity mm. I think that we often meet God in it so it's putting aside time where you just allow yourself to be drawn into the crazy chaotic pointless meaningless fun yeah. thing that is play yeah. at home with your kids um, and being able to you know my kids are now into um, Minecraft and this oh, yeah. kind of thing I just hate that but I really purposefully make myself go mm -hmm. and hear about it and I have to tell my daughter yeah. I can only do this for about 10 minutes <laughs> my capacity <laughs> yeah, yeah. you know but I'm practicing because yeah. I yeah. want to be able to to play in their world mm. and they're basically doing now on screens what they used to do in small yeah. world play yeah. in fact they do it in both places yeah. um, but I find that as I play with my children yeah. we, I discover things and I, I'm freer and yeah. able to explore and discover and find things and see things with wonder and awe yes. like children do yeah. that as an adult with my adult very organised God I do yeah. everything has to have a purpose and yeah. I, you know, my three things to do today yes. you know that's how we Be think efficient. of life you know, yeah, exactly, you know. whereas yeah. if you go for a nature walk with a child you're gonna get some awe and wonder in there which oh, is yeah. a really spiritual response to the world mm. um, even if the child doesn't mention god when they pick up something like that you know they pick up a pine cone and they're like oh mummy there's something inside it, yeah. you know, and they'll sit there and pick at it and shake it out. And you don't immediately say, oh, these are seeds, my darling. Um, let me tell you about <laughs> the life God. cycle of the pine cone and how God was placed in my... You don't need to do that. Oh, what do you think it is? And you and you shake it and you look at it and you pick at it and you mm. smell it and you lick it and you stick it in your ear. You know, and, and by doing that, you're discovering this amazing yeah. thing, which is a pine cone that God's made. Yeah. And you can bring that in, but it doesn't have to be brought in every time. You don't no, have to make every conversation about fun. nature, about God. Yeah. If in your family culture, it's generally understood that God made the world every time you admire something in the world yeah. you're admiring something god yeah. made and it's 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 you know that is praise just, it doesn't yes, have it to be you don't have to like sing a special song we're, <laughs> yeah. god, we're just thanking know? god thanks god for the pine cone yes. and we go yeah. yes exactly or whatever is necessary yeah. i gave these out to some adults the other week and we were i was with a whole load of different things and um i asked them to use the stuff that i'd put out to pray mm -hmm. um and we've talked quite a lot about but um, exploring the Bible, we haven't yeah. talked about prayer, and and I find I found it really interesting. I hadn't got a plan for this, so that's one of the things that I'm I'm a really creative person. I'm yeah. full of ideas. So, yeah. I I've been described as having more ideas before breakfast than most people have in a <laughs> lifetime. It is what I am like. Yeah, yeah. And so if you're not that kind of person, which most people aren't, just go to my website and Nickelodeon yeah, yeah. ideas. That's there what it's there, there. For, you know. <laughs> um, but what I did was I just put these out without any plan of what they were going to do to mm -hmm. pray, and then after the time of I said I want you to pray. Um, with using these things and then afterwards I just asked them what they'd done and three adults had come up with three completely different ways of Look praying that. using a pine cone but for each of them it was very kinesthetic it yeah. involved holding it and touching it and moving it around in their hands yeah. which was really interesting so for instance one of them prayed for a particular person they were praying for and they wanted them to open up to God uh, and so they held that. this in their hand and yeah. they were just thinking about that and they said they I, that's what I did I challenged them to not use words mm. to pray but to use the things instead um, and they said yeah it might my heart I was saying to God this is this is what I want the way that yeah. this pine cone is open this is what I want for this person yeah. and the others came up with two completely different ways yeah. of praying with pine and cones that sort of, because God speaks to us all in different ways doesn't he totally it just even opens your mind to, to doing exploring 
all the intricacies of God and how amazing he is in so many different facets. Yeah. And that's that's what's that's so brilliant about faith at home is that we don't have to have one way of doing it. We can find the thing that works for us, for our family, for our child in the season we're in at the moment. It doesn't have to be the same as anybody else's. That's so good. And you know, what you were talking a bit about prayer there. And I think I remember on the Parenting for Faith course they were talking about how little children can't actually internalise a prayer voice can they you know when we pray we can be quiet and internalize it but they're like i've got to say it out loud yeah <laughs> you know yeah. every secret is out loud <laughs> and I, I remember somebody on the course saying how you can get them to pray into their hands and because mm. they need to hear their voice but it's like yeah. be- so if you cut their hands it's like between them and god because it's yes. they feel like nobody else can hear yeah, we yeah. can all hear but yeah. we don't have to acknowledge that we've, we've done it's i've done that with private. again before i had children i did it with the same god god daughter who pooed in a bin um, <laughs> we did um chat and catch prayers but into pillows yeah because she was too young to pray as you say to pray in her head yeah so we just put pillows over her face she put a pillow over her own face i just like to clarify <laughs> that. very important point thanks for um, and she put a pillow over her face and we whispered and so that's just you just come up with yeah. different questions and we, she's got two older sisters so we took it in turns to yeah. think of the thing to chat with god mm-hmm. about and then everybody whispered it into a pillow yeah. and then we came up with a new thing yeah, to talk about that's so, so good friend of mine i know you've done that on your website there's like a, a bible story dice where you can roll the things and explore stories but um, a friend of mine took that for prayer and she made um, a dice for her son or, or picture cards actually and she, they just chose different pictures that were important to him so he yeah. was really into tractors so there were lots of tractors cool. and she, so they used that to pray and every time they just to start getting prayer in their home a, a little bit more intentionally they had all these cards out and a, a little dice that they made um, with all the different pictures that were important to him so he would just pray thank you God for tractors and yeah. another day it might be like oh thank you God for grandpa because he's a farmer and he likes okay. tractors we pray for him today <laughs> so it kind of led on to different things but yeah. they started with what was important yeah, to him that's amazing. and he was only like three or four so it was like his world was all about stuff and yeah, <laughs> things yeah. that he could see and were familiar and obviously that changes then as they yeah. grow and well, you I think, thank god for coffee you know yeah. well um, you know yeah. you wouldn't expect a three-year-old to thank god for that <laughs> no. so you know these things are seasonal <laughs> things <do> change <laughs> yeah so, but i think thank, thanking god for the thing that is actually important yes. to us rather than having a category of things that's important you know, yes it's, 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 i shouldn't thank important. god for you know important, yeah spiritually important <laughs> things to pray for yeah and i think also having having it so that using pictures is yeah. really really crucial yeah. we when when my girls were little we had um, a prayer book for them which was a blank board book Mm -hmm. and we stuck pictures of all the important people in the board book Um, and then they were they were really little they were I don't know one or two so like really really not I mean, they can talk at that stage, but they yeah. can't say Doesn't always make sense. a lot. Of, yeah, <laughs> a lot of very useful things. Not very articulate, should we say? They're yes. very articulate now. Um, and so we would flick through the book, and they would. I'd give the book to her, and I'd say, "Who are we going to pray for today?" Yeah. And she would flick through the book and point to the yeah. person. So, are well, we going to pray yeah, for you know great Auntie idea. Sarah today? Um, and then um, I remember once we did it, and I had a whole load of post-it notes, blank post-it notes in the back. And so we would do chat and catch. Yeah. And um, then we would draw what we chat yes. and catch. Obviously, also didn't look anything like a thing. Yeah. And yeah. um, I think <laughs> she managed to explain to me what it was. I remember one time we prayed for somebody. And she'd had a picture and I'd had a picture. And I kind of put these two things together and thought, maybe God is saying this. And this person wasn't a Christian. Mm. And so I text them and said, um, we were praying for you with, you know, Sophia's book, blame it on the child. Um, <laughs> and um, we just felt that maybe this was true for you. Mm. And it was about them being sad about something. Yeah. Um, and that God was saying that there was a rainbow and that hope, there's hope coming kind of thing. Yeah. So it was a nice, it wasn't like a, yeah, you know, yeah, a positive. it was a positive <laughs> message that <laughs> you could just give something. But I did say it in terms of prayer and stuff. Um, and they wrote, and then they, nothing happened. And I was like, mm. oh no. <laughs> and then they text back and said, oh, thank you very much. That's lovely. And I was like, yeah. Phew, that's good. Yeah. And then the next time we seen them, they told me the story about what had been going on in their life at that point and it was just bang on Love absolutely that. bang on so the rainbow was highly significant yeah. and actually the thing that we said actually God had turned that situation around and something amazing Beautiful. had happened um, in that situation oh, so it was I just this that. Just incredible thing with my child who is almost you know she's illiterate yeah. she, she can only just talk but she can point and she can scribble so things God and she can say words That's so it's incredible great. isn't it and just but a also picture book so simple I like how you took that and didn't write it off as like or just a doodle you, yeah. you knew that God wanted to speak to her and yeah. through her so it's just taking it just one more step further and being isn't it? bold saying, myself as yeah. well and saying actually I'm willing to, I've got to be willing to share something yes. that you know could be yeah could be totally could be whatever. Wall, it? Yeah, <laughs> but so. you trust God and I believe you know that as we ask God to speak to us he speaks you know he, he wants to communicate with us and our children so when we ask him to show us something yeah. I believe he shows yeah, us it might yeah. not be in a way we're expecting no. <laughs> and often in play it can be 
way out there. Yeah, and sometimes we get it wrong and we make yeah. mistakes. So making sure that it's always a nice That's thing. It, weighing is good. it up with the Bible and what yeah. is that the sort of thing God would talk about? Maybe yeah. not, you know. And, and, you know, sharing it and saying, we thought that maybe, not, you yeah. know, the Lord said to me, yes. you know, and yes. all those things, which, you know, in the that's Parenting it. for Faith course, you talk Balancing. all about that. Yeah. That's um, but right. having a book that's something that's really simple, like, or cards or something, and having it as pictures, that's a little bit more intentional because it yeah. takes a little bit of making. Yes. But like you said about the tractor book, it's got to be something that's personal to that yeah. child. Yeah. It can't just be, I can't make you a book and yeah. sell it to you and go, here's the God Venture book of prayer because yes. it hasn't got your pictures in no, it. It needs right. to have it's tractors and your auntie and yeah. whatever in it. Yeah, so pictures that are familiar to them. Yeah, that's so good. Something really I've good. done with prayer with um, with children as young as six months old, but with adults as well, which is really fun, is you play with the train of joy. Ooh. And so this involves this having a duplicate train, train. This is your train of joy. So we've, we've done it with the train of joy. We've also done it with the house of love. You can do it with whatever. Okay. I basically pick a good thing that God gives us in our life yeah. and you build a thing of it. So it could be a nice. train or a truck or a house or it just needs to be yeah, something yeah. where you can get people on or in it. Yeah, um, okay. And then you and then you get a whole load of Duplo people. Do you need my other person? Yeah. So you need a good load of Duplo people. So I've purposely gone hat. out and bought... <laughs> got lots of men here today lots of extra me. so people. i bought lots of extra people so my jeep low um came from was second hand um i think it was facebook marketplace yeah. or whatever wherever we used to buy things before facebook marketplace <laughs> yeah. i can't remember yeah. um but my sister bought it for my children for for um their christmas one year and she just put it in the dishwasher yeah um, and then i was able to buy these separately so the people so lots of lego sets come people without people really yes, this is from true. a zoo set so we often had to pray for people and they were like pigs and zebras <laughs> and things which is a little bit weird good imagination um, but you just say so i would often have a, 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 a male and a female and we'll talk about the people so would you like to pray for mummy or daddy yeah you know the child has a mummy and a daddy yes. or you might want to say so um, would you like to pray for one of your brothers you know mm. which of your brothers would you like so this is this is henry and this is harry and this is joel and, yeah and then the child points at the one they want to do and you give them them and the yes. child holds them and you say so shall we put them on the train of joy or shall we put them in the house of love so uh, which would you like which do you think harry needs most from god this week does he need joy or does he need love okay now that. That child may not understand that, but yeah. they may well understand that. Mm. And then they choose where it's going to go. They point to it. And then depending on how old they are, you help them to put yes, to Harry come. onto the train of joy. And then you choose the choo, train choo, off, you know. Um, <laughs> I mean, I've done this with adults. And obviously, adults make it into like a really serious kind of like, you know, <laughs> Lord, we thank you for Harry on the train of joy. I've got my special prayer Please voice on. Joy. You know. <laughs> Please um, give him joy and I'm not sounding very joyful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But for me, the act, it, once we've talked about this and we're saying by putting Harry on here we're yeah. asking God so we're not using words we're using yes. actions to say everybody we put on the train everybody we name and put on the train of joy yeah. this is our we're prayer we're declaring joy over yeah. them effectively so, so we don't have to then say it we can say it but we yeah. don't have to say yeah. it and I think being able to step back as adults and find ways to pray mm. without words mm -hmm. um, is really helpful but also really empowering because it enables yeah. us to to pray with the body God's given us because yes. often we focus just on this bit of our body mm -hmm. that God's given us yeah. whereas I've prayed for people by needing Eating bread. Now you come across that. It's oh, a very Jewish thing that yeah. you make. You make a challah loaf every Friday, and that, I now have a mixer, so I don't do it as often. But when my <laughs> yeah. kids were little, I didn't have the mixer. I'd always knead the challah mm. by by hand, and I'd basically call to mind something that was really hard. Basically, a difficult situation. Yeah. I wanted God to work in. Hadn't seen Him answer my prayers yet, and I would give it some. You yeah, know, it's just, a great you know, therapy. Actually. No words. <laughs> yeah, just, just you know, this is how out. I feel about yeah. this God. Like, when are you going to do something about this? Yeah, um, and you know, children totally get that yes, kind of prayer. Yes. We've done pinyon to prayer that um, we've oh, talked about injustice yeah. and about you know breaking the chains of injustice yes. we've talked about you know child labour or whatever mm. and then we just bash the child labour with yeah. a stick until the sweets so fall out and obviously sweets binding and loosing so. in the bible yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's loosing it's very very <laughs> physical yeah um, and so there's something you know making it practicing it with our kids actually is really beneficial to us yeah as well, yeah i think it's really opens up your mind to a whole different way of exploring faith isn't it yes yeah, yeah really yeah. good love all that so if we can close in any way, because <laughs> we could go on forever with all this play, couldn't we? We'll probably have you back on another time <laughs> to explore even more, because I know there's so many ideas. But um, if you could summarise it, have you got like three key points that, it, you know, as a parent watching here with under five children, what would you say are you, if you can, <laughs> three key points that we could take away from this podcast that might help us get started with? using play with our children. Okay, so I would say, first of all, practice using play in your own faith. Yeah. So practice doing reading a Bible story and then giving yourself something to do that's fun, that yeah. has no rules that anyone else has given you. Yeah. So you might like to paint or to draw mm. or to bake yeah. or to sit quietly and think or to listen to music or play music or something that is... 
I guess, creative, mm. open-ended. Not um, so formalised. Yeah. yeah. And that you don't have an end to it. But yeah. to do something like that, because I really feel like we, we, we'll we discover the new thing. We'll discover mm. a new way of connecting with God, mm. do it through play. Mm-hmm. So read a story, do some play yourself. Um, and then the That's second cool. thing is... Um, make a date in your diary to go and play with your kids. Yeah. If, if you find it really difficult, set making a, time is set, such an important set a, thing. Set a timer on your phone. Like yeah. if you're like me and you hate Minecraft, like set a timer on your phone. Say <laughs> yeah. I'm going to do ten minutes. I'm not yeah. going to stop until I've done ten minutes. Yeah. Of you might find that actually after ten minutes you might be quite enjoying it. Yeah. Um, ask your children to lead you. Say what would you like? I'd like to play with you. What would you like to play with? And yeah. just commit yourself to actually playing with yeah. them. Yeah. Um, and then. So just pray and ask God to give you an opportunity to share a story or to pray mm. using the play. Yeah. Um, and and really don't simple. make it happen. Don't push yeah. it to happen. Just have something up your sleeve. Have a story up your sleeve so that when the moment comes, yeah. you can do a 20-minute rendition of yeah. The Lost Sheep or of <laughs> yeah. The Good Samaritan or of or yeah. whoever it is that you're yeah, reading just about. just bring it into normal life as yeah. an overflow, like we've said earlier, isn't yeah. it? It's just having it there ready to go. Yeah. Oh, that's so yeah, helpful. So those are my three things. That's really great. Thank <laughs> you so much. My goodness. This has been such an exciting... I've enjoyed this. We've had toys and everything. <laughs> it's right up my street, this is. So thank you so much. I'm going to hold my man with a blue hat. <laughs> He's really uh, needing to be held. Thank you so much for joining us. Pleasure. Really appreciate what you've shared with us. Um, we'd love to hear your questions and your suggestions, things that you might have found really helpful with playing with your children already at home or things that you want to find out more from Victoria about. You can go to her website, obviously, godventure.co.uk. And uh, there's loads of stuff in there on Bible activities and prayer. And there's loads of stuff out right now for Christmas. Um, there's lots of stuff going on. Um, do follow us, uh, share this podcast with your friends and family who you think might find it helpful. And uh, we'd love to see you again on another episode. So thanks for joining us today. Bye. <laughs>